So everyone, it looks like Apple has finally released iOS 16.5, and in this video, what I wanna do is walk over every single new thing that Apple gave us with 16.5, even though it's not a huge update because this will be the final iOS 16 iteration that we get before Apple announces iOS 17 at WWDC, and normally about a day or two after that is when the developer beta does come out for iOS 17 to test out and try out all those new features that they announce. So in this video, if you did update to iOS 16.5, here's every single new aspect and new feature that Apple included in there. Let's get into it. So let's get right into this video, everybody, and talk about the features and changes that we got with iOS 16.5. I am using an iPhone 13 Pro Max to show everything off, but it should be relatively the same with all the corresponding iPhones. And just to let you know, if you have an iPhone 8 or newer, you will be able to get this 16.5 update for those people that are wondering. Now with iOS 17, we're still finding out what kind of support we're gonna get, but for 16.5, if you have an iPhone 8 or newer, and that includes the iPhone SE 2, you should be good to go with getting this all updated and installed. So the first thing you might notice is actually this wallpaper. This is the first new one that we're gonna talk about. So if you go into here, go into your lock screen, you can see that we have some sort of motion right there. So if I lock this again, if I kind of show the lock screen, you kind of see a little bit of motion. And then when I unlock it, you can actually see that everything moves. So that is a brand new wallpaper and animation that Apple put together for Pride Month. So if I lock it and you can see that if I long press here, if I go and kind of customize a new one, let's press plus. And we scroll down, we get a brand new category, which is this pride category. So this is designed with the colors of the pride flag to celebrate the LGBTQ plus community. We can press add to both, set it as a wallpaper pair, click on that. And then like I said, if you unlock it, everything moves around. And I kind of like this new interface. I hope Apple kind of adopts this with some other wallpapers as well. But for me, I love this and Apple did just recently add this with 16.5. And now for the next new feature, ever since Apple kind of announced our partnership with the MLS to have the rights to it for the next 10 years, Apple seems to be putting a big foot forward into the sports category. And I believe Apple's going in there because they're slowly putting their fingers and their feet into other kind of revenue spaces and they're learning that sports is a big revenue generator for a lot of companies. So if you go to the Apple News application, this is the news application, but you'll see that on the bottom toolbar down here, you get some new things and some new kind of icons. So firstly, there's now five tabs instead of the four tabs that we had before with 16 points. Four. This new tab over here looks a little bit different because it's now the following and the search tab. So everything that you follow shows up on here, but then you can also search from here, whereas before it used to be a standalone search button right there. But then also the main thing that you see is this new middle sports tab. So if we click on this sports tab, the main home screen of this sports tab is gonna be very similar to the regular Apple News home screen, but obviously the categories and the subject matter is gonna be all about sports. So you can see here, they're talking about the NBA draft lottery, game one of the Lakers Nuggets series. I'm very excited about the Heat Celtics series. So if you guys are watching that, go Heat. But you can see that the interface is very familiar, right? You get your main sports up here. You get the scores and schedules of your favorite teams, which you can kind of click on the top right right here. Go to manage my sports. And then you can add all your different sports teams that you follow. So as you guys can see, I'm a big Miami sports fan. All the Miami sports are listed right here. You can not only look at teams, but then you can also look at leagues and overall athletes. So if I wanted to maybe put in here Jimmy Butler, I can add Jimmy Butler on there, press done, and then whatever Jimmy Butler news starts coming up, it'll start to show up and populate in my feed. And then it also gives you some suggested as well as all the sports. So you can see that it's gonna show the scores and schedules of your favorite teams right here, as well as the followings right here, and then some overall highlights, which you can see of like the Marlins game, which they won on a walk off. You keep scrolling down and you get some more news as well. And then as you can see on the top left corner, you do get an all sports tab. And this literally will show you every single league that Apple is supporting. So you have everything from NFL, MLB, NBA, WNBA, to tennis, to MMA, to motorsports, fantasy sports, cricket, rugby, esports and even some Olympic stuff. So if, in order to get some actual scores and highlights, you gotta go into this NBA right here and then you'll get the most recent scores of the NBA schedule. So if you go on here, the one thing that is missing in my opinion is that there isn't really a box score interface inside of this application. So what a box score is, is that it gives you pretty much a breakdown of all the points scored by each player. It gives you basically some more analytics and data of each player, which a lot of people like to see, especially for fantasy sake. So right now, the only real information that you get is the actual score itself. And then you get some news and some follow-up and some recaps of that game. And then you also have the ability to open it in Apple TV. So if you have the ability or you have a way to watch this, you'll be able to watch it directly from Apple TV, which is nice to have. And this works great, especially during the regular season. For instance, I'm a subscriber of NBA TV. Whenever I wanna watch a Heat game, I just click on open an Apple TV and then it'll take me to the NBA TV stream via Apple TV. 
And then on the top right hand corner, you do have your three dots, which basically allows you to follow or unfollow the team or block those teams, report an issue, copy the link, or even share the game. But that is the sports tab in a nutshell. It's very surface for the most part. Great UI in my opinion, gives you great stories from different publications in the sports realm. I just wish we got a little bit more data and a little bit more when it comes to the actual stuff that comes in the individual sport and in the individual game. But that's just me and I'm sure Apple's going to slowly, continuously invest in this and update this as time goes on. And something else that came alongside this is actually the ability to now have quad viewing with Apple TV. So I'll put a screenshot of what that looks like right now, but Apple did release the ability to go and be able to watch up to four different sports games at the same time on one TV via Apple TV, which is great to have. So if you're somebody that watches a little MLS, a little MLB, a little NBA, you can watch all of your teams at the same time if they are playing at the same time, instead of going back and forth during commercials. Now the next thing that came with the 16.5 update, and technically it came with 16.4, but it came out during the 16.5 beta, it has to be the Apple Savings account. So we do have a complete video, but I will kind of walk you guys through exactly how to quickly set it up if you don't have it. What you're gonna wanna do is go down, go to your wallet application. So we go into wallet, then you have all your cards right here. Let's click on your Apple wallet card. And then you can see that I have my Apple wallet card right here. And I already have my savings account set up. You can see my current balance is right there. But to set it up, you just click on your three dots, go into your daily cash, and then down here, it's gonna give you the option to actually set up that savings account. So as of right now, for me, it gives you your daily cash election. So once it is set up completely, and to actually set it up, you will need to be an Apple Card subscriber. So you can't just set up the savings account without being an Apple Card user. So unfortunately, if you're not an Apple Card user, you don't have access to this, but if you are an Apple Card user, then once you get this all set up, you can actually elect to figure out where you want your daily cash to go to. Do you want it to go in your Apple Cash, which is then readily available and easy to use, or do you want it to go into your savings account to earn that 4.15%? So if you go on here, you can see that my daily cash gets added little by little. With every transaction, every purchase, more and more gets added in there. And we are dealing with 4.15% APY, which, in all intents and purposes, is a great and competitive rate. Now, I will list some other banks down below, like I, for instance, use a company called SoFi, and that gives you 4.2% APY on your savings account without having to go through all this. And there's also some other ones that give you a little bit more even, so I'll definitely link a couple down below that I recommend and that I personally use. And a question that I do get from a lot of people is how accessible is this money? It's actually very accessible depending on how you want to do it. So if you want to withdraw, let's say I'm going to withdraw and I want to withdraw a dollar, you can actually withdraw it not only to your bank account, but you can actually withdraw it to your actual daily cash or your Apple cash to use it immediately. So this transfers instantly. So if you want to transfer it to your Apple cash, it'll transfer immediately. And if you want to transfer it to your actual bank account, it'll take one to three business days. But for me, it usually takes about 24 hours to get that done. So to each their own. And same thing with adding money. If you wanna add money from your bank account, it'll take one to three days to show up in your current balance of your savings account. And that is the new Apple savings account in a nutshell, very self-explanatory. If you want that 4.15%, you have to be an Apple Card user in order to take advantage of it. And then another thing that rolled out, which I technically still don't have access to, is the new Apple Pay Later kind of situation and feature. So Apple Pay Later is Apple's kind of competitor to those buy now, pay later platforms where you basically get to get a short-term loan to be able to split up payments into two, three, four, even six weeks at a time. It doesn't affect your credit score unless you'd miss a payment. So it's not a real credit check when you do ask for that loan. But for Apple Pay Later, you can get up to a thousand dollar loan and split it up into six week increments. And basically the way you do it is if it is supported and you have access to it, if you are to check out via Apple Pay, you will have the option to then do the Apple Pay Later option, which to each their own. I'm not a big fan of those platforms because it kind of encourages buying something that you can't really afford, but a lot of people seem to use it and it seems to be a very lucrative feature and a very lucrative kind of category of way to get money out of people, unfortunately. Now, the next thing that came out during the 16.5 update was actually Apple Classical. So if you guys remember, Classical is a standalone application that Apple came up with to let you listen to some high quality actual classical music and they separated it completely from the Apple Music application. So it looks exactly like Apple Music. You have your browse features, you have your library. You can search based on composer, based on song name, based on era if you would like to. And also whatever you save into your playlist on here will actually show up in your playlist on Apple Music as well. So let's say I go on here, let's say I go to here and I wanna save this, add this to a playlist, I wanna add this to my classic playlist, and then I go into my Apple Music application. So if I go to music, go to my playlist, you can see that I have the classic playlist right here and the new one was just added right there and I can listen to it very easily. So in my opinion, Apple Classical is more of a finder because once you find the song, you can move it to your playlist in Apple Music and then have your, you know, your modern music or whatever music you listen to plus your classical music 
in the same application, which is all fine and dandy because you cannot do it vice versa. If you save something on your playlist in Apple Music, you cannot listen to it on the Apple Classical app. Apple saw a need for it and they fit the need and obviously people seem to be very happy with it. Now you need 16.4 to actually use this one to be able to download it. It's a separate application. So once you actually update the 16.5, just go into the App Store and download it directly. And it is free to all Apple Music subscribers. And you do need to be an Apple Music subscriber in order to even have access to it. And then one final feature that Apple did talk about was actually inside of HomeKit. So if you go into your HomeKit, I am the admin right here, so it will be tough to kind of show off exactly what's going on. But if I want to add a new Matter accessory, I'm able to do that. So add accessory, it'll walk you through that actual situation. But if you actually want to share the HomeKit with somebody else with an Apple ID and make them an admin, now that admin will be able to also add Matter accessories on your behalf and also remove Matter accessories. So definitely make sure when you make somebody an admin to not make them an admin without actually knowing what they're going to do. But if you do trust them to be an admin on your Apple HomeKit, then by all means, you should be good to go. And you can see that we we do use HomeKit a decent amount. And now the final thing that I want to touch on is battery life. So if I go into my settings, again, we're using an iPhone 13 Pro Max. My battery health has already taken a hit. So if I go to my battery health, I'm at about 87% of maximum capacity, which I got this phone on day one of release day. We're coming up on two years. This is the expected battery degradation when it comes to the maximum capacity. Now, again, I use a lot of third party chargers. I keep my brightness on full blast. I never really lock the phone itself. So I don't follow the best battery practices per se. Like I've seen some people with their iPhone 14 Pro Max, even a, almost a year later, still at 100% battery. So depending on how you take care of your battery, that will help out your actual battery capacity. But you can see my last 10 days, I'm getting about seven hours and 13 minutes of screen on time. On day like Friday, you can see I used up 100% of my battery and I got eight and a half hours of screen on time, which for a two year old phone, it's really hard to complain at that time, right? Here you can see I used up even 75% battery and I got nine and a half hours of screen on time two hours of screen off time. So depending on what applications you use, depending on what kind of intensive task you use, is gonna determine how much battery life and how much screen time you'll be able to get. As you can see here on a day like Tuesday, eight and a half hours of screen on time with less than 75% of my battery being used. That's a win in my book on a two year old phone. So battery life with 16.5 is going to be great because 16.5 is going to be a bug improvements update. There isn't too many new features overall besides the ones that I mentioned. So being able to kind of improve on everything, being able to give you better quality of life updates overall while getting prepared for iOS 17 is the name of the game for Apple with the 16.5 update. But like I said, iPhone 8 or newer, and you'll be able to update the 16.5. Definitely jump on it while you still can because there are some nice quality of life improvements, but let's finish up this video, everybody. So that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, since we're so close to that iOS 17 announcement at WWDC, iOS 16.5 was mostly a quality of life kind of improvement update. Yes, we got some tangible differences like the sports tab in the Apple News app, as well as the new Apple Pay Later, as well as the Apple Savings account. But outside of that, the feature set was a little bit smaller, especially compared to the previous iterations like 16.3 and 16.4. But with those other press releases of Apple already giving us some features and some previews to features on iOS 17, makes me think that iOS 17 is gonna have some nice game-changing features when they do announce it at WWDC. So definitely stay subscribed because we will be covering covering all of WWDC, as well as when those developer betas come out a couple of days after the announcement, we'll be sure to walk you guys through every new feature that Apple released with iOS 17. And we're just excited to see what Apple gives us with this new WWDC announcement. But if you guys made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below and shout out Mr. Storm for leaving a comment in the last video. If you guys do want to be featured or shouted out in the next video, make sure to leave a comment as well. But if you guys want to watch some more iOS, iPadOS, or macOS content, click on one of these videos right here. And until next time, everybody, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace.